Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to look at graphs of functions today. We're going to be looking at graphs of functions. So let's um, take a look here. The graph that you see up top with the green dots appearing and the other graphs are some examples of things that we will look at today. First off, there are a couple of differences between um, linear and nonlinear functions. Linear functions are equations that have x and y values raised to the power of 1, usually. Just x or y. There are some exceptions to this. Absolute value equa uh, functions are not. Um, they have x and y to the power of 1. But they are, they're one exception. There's a couple of exceptions, but usually when you have x and y values just raised to the power of 1, they are usually linear functions, or functions that form straight lines. This is kind of the key here. If they can be written in standard form, which is some number times x plus some number times y is equal to another number, that is a linear equation or a linear function. They are often written in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. This is the most useful form uh, for linear functions. We get a lot of information from this. There's also something called a point slope form, but I think it's pretty dumb and I don't like using it. So um, anyway, there's a couple of p different ways that you can write um, linear equations in different forms. Um, and they look kind of like what you see there. Now nonlinear equations have an x or y value. And it's usually, again, this usually, there are some equations that are different, but it's usually raised to the power of 2 or more. That forms, whenever x is raised to a power of 2 or more, it's going to form a nonlinear function. And they may form waves or lines or all sorts of different funky things. But when they're raised to the power of 2 or more, they're going to form something other than a line. However, they will still be functions. Let's talk real quick about what a function is. A function is when you can draw a vertical line and it touches one or zero points on a graph. So this one here where you only have one point or no points being touched, that is an example of a function. Over here where you see this line, this is a relation. A relation is just any set of ordered pairs. So basically if there is a two points that are vertical of each other, okay, two points that um, a vertical line would pass through two or more points, then it is no longer a function. So you'll see that with a line, as long as it's not a straight vertical line, it would be a function because a line, a vertical line, would only touch it in one place. So Let's look at the uh, graph of linear functions. So I'm going to plot a couple points on here, put this line on. All right, this is an example of a linear function. Okay, the variables decrease or increase at a constant rate, which is called slope. And that's kind of the key factors of a linear function is you can, you can draw it in a line, obviously linear is a line, um, and the rate of increase or decrease is constant and that's called our slope. So linear functions have a slope and they look, you know, in a nice straight line. Now, nonlinear functions get kind of fun. There's lots of different nonlinear functions. This one here, um, x to the power of 2, is if I were to draw these dots on here, and form a parabolic curve or a parabola. Okay? They have x raised to the power of 2. Now you could do x squared plus 5 or minus 5 or 2x squared minus 6, but the point is that you've got that x raised to the power of 2. You're going to form this kind of curve shape. Now adding numbers on the end or putting numbers in front or making it negative, that'll shift this graph up and down, side to side, flip it upside down so that it's opening downwards instead of upwards, uh, make it narrow or wide wider, but you're still going to get that general curved shape. All right, so that's that's one very common example of a nonlinear function, y is equal to x squared. 
A common example with word problems of this is comparing the side length of a square to the area of a square because the area is equal to the side length squared. So that would be a common um, word problem type comparison of using this nonlinear function. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. First off, let's look at a couple more nonlinear functions, y to the power, or y equals x to the power of 3. This one here is kind of funky. Um, and again, the common example would be comparing the length of a side of a cube versus the volume of a cube. Volume is the side cubed, so um, you'd get kind of a funky little um, squiggly line. This is still a function because when you place a vertical line on it, it would only touch one place on the graph. One more that's not nearly as common and hopefully won't confuse you, and thank you to calculatorsoup.com for this picture that I stole, um, but when you're graphing a sign, Okay, sine or cosine tangent. When you start graphing trigonometric ratios, um, you get funky looking patterns. And this one is sine of x. Um, again, it's a trigonometric ratio of the side lengths of triangles. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's a wave. And you, when you put the vertical line in there, you would only ever touch one part of the wave at a time. So that's just a kind of an, another example of a nonlinear function. I just wanted to put one up there that's in a wave so that you can see what it looks like. It still is a function. It just looks kind of funky. Now, let's talk about, um, let's back up to um, Math 8, <laughs> get out of trigonometry, go back to Math 8, and talk about a sample question, um, a sample common core type question that would relate to all that we've talked about. Juliet creates a function for some unknown reason. Juliet's bored. Um, she creates a function that relates x to y. When the, she graphs the function, she finds that the relationship between x and y is nonlinear, which would describe x and y. So we're going to need to know what linear and nonlinear look like. Remember the key, if it's linear, it has a constant rate of change, slope. All those other ones don't have a constant rate of change. So that's important to, to realize. So let's talk about these examples um, again from this sample question I pulled. Why is the number of feet in x yards? No, this would increase at a regular rate because every yard is 3 feet. So it has a steady slope of 3. When our y number of yards increases by 1, our number of feet increases by 3. It's a steady slope. Our next example, why is the number of cans of soda in, a, in x 12 packs? Again, this is, no, this is um, not nonlinear. This is linear. It would increase at a regular rate. Each pack has 12 cans. Therefore, again, we've got a steady slope of 12. How about this one? Why is the area of a square with a side length of x inches? This is our nonlinear equation right here. As the side length increases, the area is squared. So um, I just put some points up there. The side length starts at 1, the area would be 1. The side length is 2, the area would be 4. The side length is 3, the area would be 9. 4, 16, 5, 25. Notice this is not linear. Um, it's not increasing steadily, it's increasing what we call exponentially. It is squaring every time the side length increases by 1. It's not a steady rate of change, therefore this one is our nonlinear equation. D, uh, why is the number of miles traveled by a car at top speed in x minutes? Again, the number of miles um, increases at a regular rate. The steady slope of this one is the car's top speed. We're not accelerating. We are at a steady speed, the top speed that a car can go for X number of minutes. All right. So again, the key here between linear and nonlinear equations when you're given a word problem is looking for a steady rate of increase or decrease. You're looking for the slope. Linear equations have slope. That's going to be the key to solving this type of question. Let me show you the, um, the Common Core and PA eligible content here just so that you can kind of see. Um, the 
eligible content here is to interpret the equation of y equals mx plus b as defining a linear function whose graph is a straight line. Okay, so it's tough to, to convert from that into that sample word problem that we had, but understanding that a linear equation has a steady slope is going to be the key to being able to identify whether it's linear or nonlinear functions. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.